Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I am so excited today. I've got singer, Broadway actress, Rosalind Kahn with me. So welcome, Rosalind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. How are you doing today? You know, I, so good. I was so excited to talk to you. I was, I was telling you off camera, my mother was just the biggest fan of yours. And, and so I grew up listening and w watching you on the Tonight Show. You know, we oh, saw you oh. on there all the time. She, she was uh, uh, great as a mom in occasionally allowing me to stay up with her to watch stuff and and we loved watching johnny carson so we saw you on there. um she was big on you know back in the day we'd have movies of the week so uh -huh. okay she'd let me stay up uh, for one of those yeah i used to um, love those movies of the week the oh me too night and friday and sunday night and i always had my lineup in my day my childhood because we knew what we only had so many stations and i knew i had everything lined up what i was going to watch at 7 38 8 39 yeah. And then nine was always at the banana. Uh, no, eight o'clock would be bonanza or something. Then nine would be the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, back then, if you missed an episode or a movie or anything, you were stuck till like they showed reruns. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you didn't have any of this. I'll just watch it whenever I want. It, exactly, but there's too many stations now. I can't keep them keep. Oh, up. you can't keep up. I, I mean, there's a ton you. of good stuff, but you can't. Yeah. But unless somebody tells me that there's something great to watch or I, I was bored one night, I'm always watching old movies on TCM or I'm on the news because I, ne I need to keep on top of it as rotten as it is. I'm going to be on top of yeah, it. Yeah, but you don't want to be surprised. you got to keep up. No, exactly. And I want to, you know, I, with even when, when I talk to people and stuff, I want to be, you know, abreast of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. did a song called uh, Save the Country. That, yeah. uh, that I really liked. And I thought it was very, uh, uh, the timing was good because, right. <laughs> because the last <laughs> few years have been rough. <laughs> right. And it was just when the, that a certain party came down an escalator and opened his mouth, I knew we were in trouble. And I was supposed to go and record my song, Light of Love, first. And I said to my producer, I said, Stefan, we're going to put this aside and we're going to do Save the Country because we need it right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know it's a scary time right now. Scary. I think you know it's it's. We have I've never, never been. In a place, we have never, never been in a two hundred year history been in a place like this. That's you what know? I'll say. I've never I've never felt like we we're in this place. Like we're we're kind yeah. of in that position where we're right on the edge. Yeah, <laughs> we it's need to step back. We used to, I know, you Democrats and Republicans. They used to be civil, and they would want to be on the side of the country. What the heck is going on today? Is scary. Because it really is. I mean, I mean, whichever side you fall on, Democrat, Republican, shouldn't we all be trying to do what's best for the most people? <laughs> well, I know who's not doing the best for most people. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to get into I know. But I, I mean, I, I know who's more for the people these days. So yeah. same. That's same. Well, yeah. so so let's let's start this way, uh, Rosalind. Tell me a little bit about you know, what got you into the entertainment business? You know, that's not an easy business to go into. You no, know, talk a little bit no. about what got you into singing and to, into the entertainment business. Well, we always sang in my house. My mother sang, well, my grandfather, our maternal grandfather was a cantor in Europe, oh. in Russia before they emigrated to the United States. He didn't follow it up here, but um, he was, he, he used it when he was in Russia before they came here. And he, he uh, sent his little voice jeans to my mom <laughs> and then my mom sent it to her her daughters and my sister sent it to her son and you know and uh, the rest is history and uh, we we had music around the house but uh, when we were younger you know we would like uh, harmonize or whatever but I was so lower in age than my sister so I was like a kid when she was but I so I I, I heard the influences of, of the people she was listening to as well as what I was listening to in those days, when I was like a kindergartner, I'd be listening to Davy Crockett. And <laughs> those, kind of songs. those were my first songs and songs from Hebrew school, you know, in songs of school. But um, I got acquainted, you know, when you're, like you said, with your mom, when they're acquainted with what's going on today right. in the entertainment business and they bring their children into it, some parents aren't into that. And so the children right. don't know anything. But we were lucky to have those influences. Well, we, your your mom did she she sing opera? Is that right? She was a soprano. She never did go into opera because oh, in those okay. days that her parents are you know it's a bum's business, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but uh, but she had the most beautiful voice. As a matter of fact, when I was on the road with my sister, we played at a couple of stops. We played a tape of our mother singing uh, years ago. Uh, over the thing, we said, "Hey, Ma, you made it to the O2," you know, um, which was in London, or the Hollywood Bowl. We played it, you know, and we we said to ourselves, "Diana's daughters." Tonight you're going to play <laughs> Diana's daughters. So, I love that. <laughs> well, and I love that the two of you uh, sing together and tour together on occasion. I I think that's that's terrific, and it just as fans, we love to see that. You know, you love to see yeah. family getting along. Well, so many people were waiting there for the longest time because I, I, you know, I don't, I have never tried to make it on my sister's coattails. I've always been my own. Wait, and you don't need to. You're so talented know. by yourself. <laughs> and, you know, but people would always say, "When? Why don't you two sing together? Why don't you two? And finally, in 2012 and 13, yeah, we made it happen. My sister made it happen on her tour. It became a family tour. So we duetted, and my nephew was on the bill, and he, and that was like his debut. He had. We didn't even know he sang. He, you wow. know, he, yeah, it was amazing. So um, we had a great time. It's nothing like touring with your family and uh, you know having fun as well as being on the stage yeah. with them and uh, going to eat and going to movies when yeah, you're not going shopping. All the different towns we went to, we had a blast. It was yeah. a blast, and then to sing to these twenty thousand seat auditoriums was mind boggling. That's amazing. That's amazing. My, uh, I've got a, a cousin who absolutely loved uh, you and Barbara's uh, music growing up, and she would would sing it a lot at church or in you know at, at school and and that thing. And she had a lovely voice, still does, still does have a lovely voice. But that's what um, you know, kind of uh, uh, we we've lived a little bit through her because she was at some of those shows back in 12 mm -hmm. and 13 so she got to see both of you in in those and absolutely still talks about that as her just her favorite mm -hmm. concerts uh, <laughs> i'm glad we had a positive effect on her yeah 
Yeah. Well, and you've always done, um, you've done a lot of work on Broadway and got Not to, a lot. Uh, not a lot. I've well, been on I'll for, say a lot. I've, probably. You know, off I've, I've done a little off-Broadway. I've done a little Broadway. I've done, you know, regional. Yeah. Um, yeah. And mostly, you know, singing in clubs and in, uh, the, in like venues of 300, 400 seats. We'd call you, um, like when I was growing up, we would have said you were uh, like a cabaret singer. Yeah, that's what they would call me. But I'm more than that. I, I think so. <laughs> I get upset when people just call me a cabaret singer. And all my friends say, what, they're pigeonholing you. That's not all you do. <laughs> no, that's absolutely right. That's, not that there's anything wrong with that. No, it's just that it's not where it stops. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. And and I love the fact that you're still putting out music. You know, oh, yeah. you, um, it took me a it, while to get out of COVID and come back out. Right. Well, it did all of us. Did yeah. you, but right uh, now, it took me a lot longer. And this, this, it's this recording and this video that is my my re-entrance out there. Yeah, I know. I I love that. Did you when when you were were trapped at home like the rest of us were? Were you writing? Were you, were you working on? Some I, I was putting out some music. Yeah, I put out some music and I put out some videos, you know, via Zoom with my my record producer. Uh, but we use stock footage. I didn't do anything live like this time. I actually produced produced this project and starred in it. Got I, my. I, I know. I it. love it. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. So you're you're basically making a medley. So it's you're taking a couple of songs that you've already done and turning it into something new. But where the you know what songs are you using? Where did the idea come from? It's a uh, backrack and David's the look of love. Yeah. And Yvonne Lynn's, Vitor Martin's, and uh, Marilyn and Alan Bergman's English lyrics, which are always gorgeous, yeah. um, for the island. And no, uh, that's, they, what, what made you put those two together? Well, because, because it sounds they were, terrific. They were two of my favorite songs, and I never did them together. I used to, you know, different shows, different times. <laughs> I would do Look of Love in my show. I would do The Island and different shows. And one day I had to put another, you know, a new uh, show to go out with. Yeah. And I had to come up with new ideas. And I thought, gee, I wonder how these two would sound together. Because I love story songs. Those are my favorite. I mean, you can't have too many in a show because people want to hear up tunes and this, but that's my forte is this story song to create a scenario. And I thought these two songs could great, create a great story. And so I presented it to my musical director at the time and we tried it out and it worked so beautifully. It really does. That, um, that I did it with piano and then I did it with trio, but I wasn't satisfied until I had it fully orchestrated with the strings and the French horns and everything. And we did, I did that with Stefan. And then I recently made the video. We just finished it. The video was a year in the making from the, from the ground up, from the concept and having a meeting with my director that I chose, Monique and Pagliazzo. And then she introduced me to my co-producer, who was asked him to produce with me because he was so knowledgeable. And and then we had they have the, the our director of photography who was on their team already and he's wonderful. Yeah, it's, like a, it's like a mini it, movie. We it is. It's a six minute mini movie. We yeah. cast it. We have my younger self and my my love interest younger self and I cast my love interest. And we had we, four days of shooting on locations, four locations. And so it, and it took us time because of everybody's schedules. Yeah, of course. So it just came out, and we thought, do you think we can get it after Valentine's Day? That would be so perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. and we made it happen. We made it happen. <laughs> so did it come out today? Uh -huh. Well, what's today? Today's the 15th. Well, it was yesterday it came out. So it came on out Valentine's on Valentine's Day. Day. On Valentine's Day. I love we, that. We, we let it drop at midnight. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and it sounds, I mean, it really does sound well i you wouldn't like i don't know that i'd have combined those two songs on my own but once you did it i was like yeah that works uh -huh. yeah that's really good was it fun getting to make that because it's i mean it's a music video but it's more like yeah. a film because you it's like yeah. minutes. it's more like a mini movie it really yeah. is you know book a cast and crew and makeup and hair and the whole the whole uh gonsa Magilla. And I, I, it was a first for me. It's my, it was me. I was a first-time producer, 
And so I had such a great learning curve for me. I learned so much. And the producer does a lot. Also, the menial jobs, going to pick up the lunch sometimes, <laughs> whatever. If yeah, else yeah. Is producer gets all right? of it. <laughs> <laughs> as well as, you know, telling, saying to my director, if I saw something that I'd like put in that wasn't being done, I would whisper yeah. in her ear, because, you know, you're never supposed to take over the director's job. It's always the directions have they to come. They prefer if you don't. But if I... <laughs> But if I see something, I will whisper to her, let them try this or something. I want a little more sensuality here, please, please whatever. And um, and they, everybody, you know, the greatest part is everybody on this team, all the way down. And then the people we cast uh, yeah. were so full of love and light. There wasn't an ounce of somebody feeling they're better than the next person. There wasn't an ounce of narcissism. There wasn't an ounce of bullying. It was just everybody in this... They love being there and being included in this project to make it as great as it could be. Well, how great. And it how much fun to work on something like that and then to exactly. see the results. Yeah, exactly. It, was, it really was a labor of love amongst us all. That's, a, that's, that's terrific. And, and good for you for, uh, for putting that out. And what a great idea to do it on Valentine's Day. Yeah. We just made it. We were almost we weren't sure we were going to make Mount Valentine's Day. We were still colorizing. <laughs> we thought, oh my God, when we get this finished, making changes. <laughs> you got it done. We got it done. Do you play, uh, what instruments do you play outside of piano? I really don't play the piano. I, I one finger the piano. Yeah, I get but that. I mean, you got to you gotta have a little bit of it when I'm assuming yeah. when you're writing. Yeah probably helps but uh, well Ooh. usually when i'm writing whoever's writing the music is on the piano yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, when i worked it's mostly i had a partner and we did the lyrics mm -hmm. um but um what were we saying i'm mean, just asking we, what, if you play any instruments oh oh when i was a little kid um my parents couldn't afford a piano so i took believe it or not i took accordion lessons really <laughs> The little accordion. I used to do jokes about being flat chested. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't go further because my parents couldn't afford to get me a big accordion. <laughs> do you own an accordion now? No, I own a piano. <laughs> is it like, is it a baby grand or is it? It's a, yeah, it's a small one. It's yeah. a small one. Yeah. Well, you got to have that. Yeah, you, you have to have that. Play. My uh, my mother's a, a piano player, and she she plays yeah. by ear mostly. Uh, she can read music, but prefers mm -hmm. to play by ear. But she's always wanted that baby grand, so that's yeah. that's still on my father and my list to get her that baby grand. Because you know he he got her a new piano, she, the one that kind of she had when I was growing up. It got yeah. to the point that it just wasn't very playable anymore. So yeah. he got her a new piano, but she's she's always wanted that uh, baby grand. So at some point. Yeah. We're going to get that for her. Oh, well, that's good. She deserves it. She Sounds deserves like it. Yeah. <laughs> Put up with us. <laughs> <laughs> so you had, there was a couple other songs that you put out that, that I absolutely love. Um, oh, It Only Takes a Moment. Uh -huh. Love that song. Hello, Dolly. Yeah, I, I did. We did it with that, that. This was a recommendation of my New York musical director, Alex Rybeck, when we were putting together a show for 54 Below. And he came up with that idea. Oh, well, he did good. And it was absolutely, it's, a, it's, my not, it's my 11 o'clock song in my performance pieces now because it gets standing ovations. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's breathtaking, isn't it? What a gorgeous combo, gorgeous combo. Yeah, Such I absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's probably one of my favorites that, that you do. I, I just, I, I think it's so, um, like it, it, it causes you to be emotional when you listen to it, but then after you feel kind of good, it's kind of relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> but again, a story song, you see two songs that made a well, story. That's part of the reason I love your music so much is, is because I, I talk a lot, you know, we have a lot of musicians on here and I always ask, you know, mm -hmm. does this, does this album or EP, you know, they do mostly EPs now, but it is, is, does it tell a story? You know, is are the songs connected at all? Is it, it you know, is there a, a theme to it? And sometimes there is, which I tend to like those type of albums. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just, no, that's just a bunch of random songs that I like. So yeah. Put them. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I, started, you, when I started in the business and Richard Mulpey and David Shire wrote my, I had Lee Holdridge just do my 
my very first show that I took on tour after I I, uh, I debuted on the Ed Sullivan show when I was still a teenager. That's, that's and, insane and so, to say. Ed you Sullivan. Know, it seems like so. In the way how old I am, it's terrible that I'm doing that. <laughs> It's just a it, to me. It's just amazing. I, it's Ed Solomon. You say that, and you're like, that's it's kind of this legendary figure, right? But most of us have never actually seen his show live. But they do have reruns of it now. Oh yeah, I've seen plenty of those. It's it's I love it. Uh, but yeah, but you were on it. <laughs> I was on it when I was eighteen. Yeah, when I was eighteen, Same. and uh, I made my debut there, and I went, and Lee Holdridge did my first offering of a show when I was touring the country. Um, and um, so the Hungry Eye and I did, I was, went to LA and did the Johnny Carson show or whatever. But um, the, what was, I'm losing my thought because so many things are going around in my head. Um, what was that? What was the first it? album I think was- Oh, the first know. album? Was the, oh, so no, the shows. And my my show that for most, was my debut at the Persian room at the Plaza Hotel when I was still 18. Um, Cause I turned 19 while I was doing my gig there for three weeks. Um, <laughs> I put, we put songs, we put medleys together like songs about Sunday, but yeah. they made sense in the way that they came up in time like starting with Sunday, Sunday, Sweet Sunday. And then, you know, and then uh, New York on Sunday in New York. They were like came through the decades. I love that. Ending up with Sunday, uh, Sunday will never be the same. You know, will you be? Love so it song. made it made sense that way. And we, then we did a hair and promises, promises medley. So it was songs that just built. I started out with singing Frank Mills, and then it went go wild and go wings good. No wings to leave on if I let you reach a point of no return. For that. You know, so <laughs> it got. And then letting, ending with Let the Sun Shine In, which was like unheard of at the Persian Room. I had this youthful wow. energy, as an 18-year-old's energy in the Persian Room, which was like, you know? Yeah, but you can get away with that as an 18-year-old, I think. I, well, I guess. I didn't, you don't know until you do it. <laughs> no, I, I, I love that. And, and um, I was saying, I think your first album was Give Me You. Yes with that and we used to my mother and i would listen to that one all the time we, we she that was one of her favorites and we we'd listen to that uh all the time um i started that one the day i graduated high school it was my first day in the studio recording well yeah because it came out not too long after that right yeah i went and then i went on tour with rca with my record around the country before the the persian engagement wow and, Amazing. Used to love to see you. Uh, it, you'd show up every once in a while and give me a break. Uh huh. <laughs> on there, and and I, I love like when I was prepping for the interview, and I I saw that, and I was like, oh yeah, I used to watch that all the time. Give me a break is one. Uh, it's a show that we don't talk about much anymore, but it was so popular when it was on. Yeah, it definitely was. It was a big show with Nell Carter. May she rest in peace. Yeah, and she was. I mean, yeah. just an amazing. It's hysterical. Character. Yeah. Yeah, she's so funny. Yeah, so funny. But we used to love it when you would uh, uh, pop in on that because there were several episodes you showed up on. <laughs> and the nanny loved you on the nanny. That one I played myself. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, and that was a good episode. Everybody loves that episode. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I, like I I don't know, but I I think mm -hmm. most people would say it's one of their favorites. It was so yeah. good. Yeah. It was fun. It's just fun company to work with. Fun. Everybody was so great. Fran has uh, been in the news a little bit uh, lately with the strike and yeah. You know, oh, she could, yeah, she's president now. Sag. Yeah. yeah. I know it seems it seems yeah. strange to say that, but she's done a really good job with it. Yeah, she has. She's really good. She's yeah. It's uh, it's it's worked uh, pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. the uh, look of love, if I remember right, wasn't that in a like Casino Royale, was that the one? It, it was. As a matter of fact, when we when Pierce Brosnan walked across our set when we were taping at the beach, um, my producer, my co-producer Malik, you know, he I was I was all in focus because I'm concentrating on my song. Of course. And he says, "Oh my God, there goes there goes Pierce Brosnan." He said, "We and he kept saying it. It's Pierce Brosnan." I said, <laughs> "Where?" And all of a sudden, I mean, Pierce I said, Pierce, Pierce, where? where? And I said, I, I saw him. I said, Pierce, Pierce. 
And he turned around and gave me a hug and then he took a picture and everybody who was on set that day was just so thrilled to meet him. He's just such a sweetie pup. I've heard he is just the best really guy. Is. Yeah, and, and, and you what guys stayed close, yes? Yeah, huh? You you stayed close, I think, right? Well, I'm not close. I haven't worked with him. He worked with my sister. And the oh. mirror has two faces. But he also sat next to him in one of my sister's uh, family and friends run-throughs before she went out on her last concert tour. And I was in the audience, and he was sitting next to me. One one night, he was sitting next to me. Another night, I had Bill Maher. You know? <laughs> so, you <Not> know. Terrible. <laughs> So we met, we actually met that night, but um, lovely, lovely person. Do you have a, uh, like a favorite song of yours or is there just too many? There's too many, but for the, for many, many years, my favorite, I mean, I, now I have more favorites too. One of my favorites was uh, Meadowlark from the Beck, Baker's Wife. Oh, that is a good one. And I did, I did open it with another song just for the verse called Living Color. Really? And it was, just, and I did. I took it out of the frame of the show. I didn't do it. I related it to my own life and my, and my grandmother's advice to me. <laughs> and it, again, it stopped the show. It was one of those numbers you could sit at the end of the stage, you know, like Judy Garland used to do. And <laughs> it's like yeah. sit at the end of the stage and and belt. But it, it had such feeling because it's basically about. You know, no matter how much you love somebody, if you're there to support them, but what if the real one comes along? Do you leave this one, you know, the, the thing, but you're not supposed to to stifle yourself. You've got to be right. true to yourself. So it, it has a, you know, it has a beginning, a middle and an end and a truth to it. And a, and something that someone has to deal with. Yeah, because it's not easy being true to yourself a lot of times. Yeah, sometimes you give in. Yeah, sometimes you give in. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes you have to make hard decisions that may negatively affect other people just to be true exactly. to yourself. Exactly. It's hard. Yeah. Life is not easy. Nobody said it would be. <laughs> they weren't if lying. they did, they were lying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you mentioned on the, the new uh, the, the new um, video that you had to cast younger versions of yourself. Was that yes. fun or was that stressful? No, it was great. Well, first of all, um, I'm sorry for that phone. I thought I turned it off. <laughs> That's a, you know, with the, 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 the great thing about Zoom is yeah. we all got used to it together. Nobody uh, pinches with that stuff. They're just like, ah, it's just part of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to hear the message. I thought, I so help me. I, th I turned it off. I turned it on. <laughs> I missed, there must be a ghost in that phone. Right. Somebody right. that wants to be heard. <laughs> If it's uh, important, you got to get it out there. <laughs> you tell Barbara you're busy. You're doing an interview. <laughs> Can you hang on one second? I got this is like too much. Yeah, of course. All right, so we're we're back. We have taken care of our phone guest. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say phone ghost? <laughs> <laughs> phone ghost that's stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> so you, we're talking about uh, casting for, oh, for casting. your younger so, self. I had, uh, Monique and Malik did you know the basic finding. They got right. a lot of names and people to look at. And they kind of brought it down to who they thought I would like. Yeah. And then that those people came to me and we met and everything. And I interviewed them and see how I felt with them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was pretty fast, actually. Pretty fast decision-making. Jules was great as, as me as a kid when I was younger. Does she and, looked like you did. When yeah. You were. Can you imagine? That's awesome. We did make her eyes green, though. They were blue. We colored her eyes green. Well, yeah, because you wanted to match yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Hunter really did look kind of like Buzz. Oh, I love that. A similarity. So, uh, and Buzz was great because he was really very easygoing. I, when I met him, I said, my God, you remind me of Ralph Waite from the Waltons. Yeah. Right? But he yeah. had these gorgeous blue eyes that I could just get lost in. And everybody thought well, when we do the kissing scene, they thought, oh my God, is this a real relationship? And the, I know that day because after that happened, behind the camera, they were dying. They were, that, that was not directed. That was us. And it was like, to, 
There's something going on. No, it's just acting. I, you know, <laughs> the chemistry though. Being in the moment, it's like it had some connection. Yeah. I mean, you know. But yeah, it was that's great yeah. though. <laughs> that that means you did a good job. They got yeah. And the kids did too, didn't they? Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the whole awesome. video is awesome. It's 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 so worth it. So yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out because it's it's yeah, it's <laughs> it's so good. That um, there was what was the let me look at my notes because there was something I wanted to make sure to ask, and I didn't want to um, to miss it. Oh, um, come what may, is that the newest album? No, that was an older one. That's an older that's, one. That's just just voice and piano, but I had. Songs like Perfect on there and uh Yeah. Oh, um, it's a good it's a great album. And I have a medley on there too that started with Smoke Gets in Your Eyes that I used to do in the clubs. I used to sit on the piano, pretend light a cigarette, pretend to smoke. They asked me how I knew my <laughs> feelings I of course replied, you know, something deep inside. It's like I did it as a comedy and then I went into Where Are You? And then uh You've Changed. So it became very torchy. Yeah. yeah, I probably enjoy that. <laughs> do you do you prefer to to work in studio or do you prefer to perform live? I love them both, I, but I love connecting with an audience. That's I love looking in people's eyes, whoever I can see. Well, you get the energy from the crowd too. You get your energy from the crowd, and I you know I have I'm a little third eye. I have. Um, I'm empathic in a way, and I can see if somebody's not happy or whatever, and I'll work harder towards them in their direction, because I want to make people happy. I want to, I want to spread positiveness in this world, and I want the light and and the heart to come back into this world and get rid of all this dark negativity. That's so, a, uh, my wife and I talk a lot about that. Is you know we it's too negative right now. Yeah, you know we need to be it needs to be more even. You should be able to disagree with somebody without getting upset. Without getting hateful. Yes. We need to get yeah. back to that. Exactly. But you also aren't supposed to be creating alternative truths because that doesn't work. There's no such thing. No, you can't do that. You can't. Do you know, it, it, I grew up around a family that loved to argue. And uh -huh. they, they tended to have different political views. And they'd get around the dinner table, you know, and, and after dinner, they'd have these arguments but they loved it you know uh -huh. and, and whenever it was done everybody just yes. wandered off and everybody was fine nobody was upset it's just like yeah you're wrong uh -huh. but i don't mind yes well, you have a different opinion everybody's got a right to an opinion i just want them all to have the right one so that we <laughs> we keep our democracy and we get back sanity yeah <laughs> we just, you know we're in with the way the world is and and the stuff that's going on outside of the U.S., we have to be careful because it could go bad for us yes. but, if we make the go back everywhere. We're the example. We were the shining light on the hill. Yeah. Now what so are we? Anymore. You know, you you travel to Europe and the people are saying, "How do you do it? How do you live?" I mean, you have to make you had to make excuses for your your I know. president. Terrible. I mean, ah. Uh, we just have to make sure we get sane people in Congress and, you know, you, people should see what's going on and understand. I, I don't, because it's a cult, you know? It's it is. Cult. It is. Nobody wants to call it that, but that is what it it's is. It's a cult and it's fascism and it's somebody who wants to be an authoritarian. Well, he he, he wants and to be a dictator. Yeah. I mean, and, he, and he's not, and he's not even smart enough. Well, <laughs> the, to me, the, the worst part is, he doesn't try to hide it. He no, he doesn't. Tell I mean, you exactly he tells you what he's I'm going to be do. an authoritarian. Only I can fix it. You want to make a bet? You know? He's telling you what he's going to do. Yeah. And for and some reason, that doesn't disqualify him from running. <laughs> yeah. The scary part is that they're applauding him when he says this stuff. I know. It. it, it I don't know where we got to the point where just because you're on the opposite party, you're wrong. Yeah. You know, it used to be, yeah, they might, you might disagree on a, like, a, just the a fundamental level, yeah. but you could argue and compromise and run the country, mm -hmm. you know, without you get things done. Being, yeah, you can get things done without being at odds. Like this stuff now where you have uh, both parties, 
basically doing things just to spite the other party, not because it's the best right. thing for the country. For political reasons, for political reasons. Yeah. You're, you're killing your own bill. Everything you wanted is in it and you're killing it. And is that helping the people in this country? No, of course not. I mean, it's, I, and I just don't understand why people don't see this. I know. I try I try not to get too much into the politics on this podcast, but it's hard. Okay, I'll, I'll come out of it. So no, just, no, it's hard sometimes because, uh, yeah. you know, to me, it's so obvious what's happening. And yet half of the country doesn't think that's what's happening. <laughs> because we also have news stations that don't report the truth. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I'm, I'm still... You know, my dad and I had this conversation this morning because, you know, my parents are very concerned with, and I, I think a lot of older people are really concerned with, with, with the way things are going. With and, the younger people, too, with climate and everything yeah. else. Will, will, well, will we bring this planet up or will it become safe to live? Yeah. I mean, you know, all you have to do is look out the window to know that climate change is real. I mean, it's nice having, you know, 70, 80 degree days in the winter, yeah. but you're not supposed to. <laughs> No, yeah. California isn't supposed to be as cold as it is now. No. <laughs> I mean, it's obvious that we have screwed some stuff. We we need yeah. to be doing things it's, to correct. It's all man-made. It's all man-made. All man-made. All man-made. <laughs> God, God gave us this planet and put us here to live and take care of his natural resources. Yeah, we've yeah. screwed Both that up. <laughs> the animals that he put here, the, the plains, the mountains, we're supposed to be caring for them, not ripping them apart. Agree. Yeah, and, and we've and it's a lot of it, you know, it's been the last what hundred years, let's say, mm -hmm. is when we've really done all the damage with yeah. that. And and I don't know how exactly we need to fix it, but obviously we're gonna have to do something or none of us are gonna be around. Exactly. And I'd hate to see that come to an end. I mean, yeah. you know Same. <laughs> a, you know, I know we've had our ups and downs. It's never been perfect. It's never been perfect. And never will be. But we can always try and strive to make it better. Yeah. yeah. You know, but people have to come from their hearts and not from here and not from greed and not from power right. and, you know, and not from lies. You have to come together in truth and love and compassion and understanding and operate from that level. Yeah, I'm 100% in agreement yeah. with you. Yeah, I agree with that. So what right happened? It's going to happen. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm crossing my fingers. Me too. My feet, years. my toes. If yeah. my nose would cross, it would cross. <laughs> Hopefully we get back to... I know. talk to the man upstairs all the time. I, know. I, know, I so. thank him for a parking space when I get it. So believe me, I think I keep talking to him about this problem too. <laughs> yeah, you, you got big and small. You got to pass that on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Roslyn, what's next? Yeah, you, you've got the the... The new medley out yeah. came out yesterday. What's what's your next project? What can we look? Well, at? I have some more recording uh, projects coming up. I'm working on uh, doing uh, a maybe a couple of duets with Malik. Uh, we're working with oh, our nice. friend uh, the Aguirres, who have Latin Grammys. And I, you know, we said we were going to do a duet, and uh, I said, well, if we're going to work with Paulina and Pablo, maybe we should do something in Spanish. Yeah. Oh, I'd love that. You know? So we're looking at that. We're, we're discussing it and working on it. And then we have another, Alec has another friend who's writing songs for us. Spanish? I, 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 you know, I took it in ninth, in ninth grade. Do I speak okay. fluently? No. Me llamo Rosalinda, como se llama? You know, I speak a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little I bit, yeah. French. I, I took a little German. I sang in Germany. Die Bäume sie rauschen, die Vögel sie zwitschern. That was make your own kind of music. Die Bäume sie rauschen, die Vögel sie zwitschern. Ganz leise, ich kann's noch nicht glauben, bis du kamst, weil ich nicht, ich nicht war allein. That's really good. And I love language. I took, a, I took Italian in my last year of high school rather than take another science. But, you know, because you're in music, you usually have a good ear. Yeah. For language. And I, I enjoy delving into that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I didn't realize that you you were able to sing in different languages. I guess you don't necessarily have to speak it as long as you can get the you know that part of it down. Mm -hmm. But I really wish I did. I mean, after five years of French, because in the school system in New York, you had a past regents exam. They never gave you enough conversation. It was yeah. always you know, the verbs and this and that and just understanding. But nobody gave you which Enough. is what you need. You have to put it yeah. in practice to actually exactly. speak it. 
But the only way you do that is if you move to the country and live there. Then you are forced to use I took, it. Um, I took high school Spanish from uh, my aunt was the oh. teacher. And she used to, uh, just a wonderful woman, but she used to crack me up because she had a very thick uh, Southern accent, I, you, thicker than mine, and mine's pretty thick, but she had a very thick, so her Spanish came with a very Southern accent and it used to just crack me up because, because <laughs> you know, we were learning it that way and it really didn't sound like Spanish. <laughs> really? You don't find that when you do that, it's like when I sing, I lose my Brooklyn accent. It's not there. Yeah, it's you would think that talk. that's the case, but it wasn't. Yeah. You know, she she had a, a very distinct accent uh, that was obviously not Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we all kind of learned it that way, which uh -huh. me up because I was like, well, I can't speak that to anybody. They're going <laughs> to not going to understand anything I'm saying. <laughs> So, yes, I've had Spanish uh, in school as well, but I cannot speak it. I can read it a little bit, can't speak uh -huh. it. I know. I have my housekeeper. I can't. It's, I have to speak to her husband. <laughs> 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 are you um, Are you planning to tour at any time? Eventually, soon? eventually, I have the recording projects and, uh, and also another project with uh, First World Cinema, these two wonderfully talented guys who create their own music. They got their own deal from the, the following that they got. And my friend did their video, which won in Rome and uh, wow. Rome and Budapest or something they won. Um, and they, I met with them and they're also writing a song for me that we'll make a video out of. Love that. And then, you know, my friend Sargon will probably direct that one, but you know, it's, it's like, it's happening and we're going to get together and they started writing it, but I had to finish this first. I can, I can never have too many things going at once. You're I so busy. I mean, but there's so many people that have irons in every fire every day. I can't operate like that. I'm like, I can't either. I have know, to be, like yeah, I can do more than one. Yeah. But not too many couple. I mean, I, I also have to do my accounting and my this, cause I mean, not that I do my taxes, but I take care of all that. I take, no, you're busy. I keep it in so that keeps me, and I'm terrible on the internet. So what takes somebody three seconds takes me a day. I get so, that. <laughs> it's like, I get it's that. So, so that stuff, <laughs> the younger you are, the better you are with it. Oh, yeah. And I don't have a, a daughter or a son that can do it for me. Donna Mills says her daughter does it for her. She told me. <laughs> you know, those of us that are older, it's very hard. And you have to be so fast. Those fingers, and my fingers always hit the wrong letter or the wrong number. It's amazing. Oh, I do too. And, 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 Technology is constantly changing. Yeah. So you end up just like, like my parents, they look at me like I'm a technical expert and I'm not, you know, I'm just better than they are. Usually <laughs> when they ask me for help, I got to call one of the kids to come help yeah. because I can maybe figure it out, but it's going, it'll take me all day. Yeah. I mean, it's so frustrating, isn't it? And now you have AI that when you even order a birthday <laughs> card or a card online, it gives you the choice. Do you want AI to create your your uh, your words, or do you want to do it yourself? Can you imagine? I know, I know. I, I it's, it's amazing that we're to that point. Unreal. It's a little scary. A little, little scary. scary. A lot scary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's happening. We might as well, you know, kind of try to make the best of it. I guess. <laughs> you gotta move on and go into the future. But hopefully, yeah. somebody can protect how far it can go. <laughs> And then they'll complain about that, that there's control. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, know, you have to have control over. You have to. Yeah, for sure. You well, know, Jocelyn, sweet. thank you so much. This has been terrific. I, I was so excited to uh, to talk with you. I told you off camera, you know, I, I've been listening to you my entire life, you know, because uh, of my, my mother. Nice thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, which, you know, I, I'm in that boat where I'm, old enough that like the 90s seem like yesterday but it's also 30 years ago <laughs> right. what were you if you were me and i was the 50s and 60s <laughs> well like you said you were on ed sullivan that's right that's that, that to me is just uh, amazing so okay so the new medley yeah. look of love and the island is out now mm -hmm. Yeah. Across the digital boards on every music platform, and you'll find the video on YouTube. Yeah, which I did. 
-hmm. and it's terrific. Everybody should watch it. They're going to love it. Um, let me ask you this before we wrap up, you know, are you on social media? And if you yes. are, where can oh, we Yes, find I you? am. My, my webpage is rosalindkind.com. I am on Facebook. I am on Instagram. And I am on TikTok as Robo Rosie. I came that's, up with that name. Don't ask me why. I just, that's it's so impressive. Basic. Robo Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok is intimidating. <laughs> That's impressive you're on there. But you should only know I can't post for myself. Certain things I post, but I have to get another one. I was going to ask you if you had something. Upload, like download. I don't know my. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to have a guy. That's what I always tell the kids. Anything you want to do in life, you got to have a guy that yeah. can help with it. You know, somebody that's an expert. Definitely. Definitely. I'm not one of those women that's handy around the house. I need somebody to change the bulbs that's so high in the ceiling. It's yeah, a, it's I, I'm the same way. Like, like <laughs> I am terrible fixing anything on my own, but I guarantee that I've got somebody that yeah. whatever breaks, I know who to call. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know I have a good plumber. <laughs> you got to have a good plumber. Yeah. You know, the, you realize you need a good plumber the moment that you don't have one. Yeah. You know, sure. there's nothing worse than a busted pipe especially right. indoors right <laughs> you have to call somebody to get them there and you're freaking out because there's water <laughs> everywhere that's the worst <laughs> i gotta have a good plumber <laughs> well roslyn thank you so much i hope we get to do this again at I hope some... so too. this has been fun yeah, thank this you has been a blast. you're so welcome yes yeah, we you gotta let me know when you start touring because because my okay, wife shall do it me. Shall do, because years ago, I did work in Virginia. I did the whole, oh. I, was going, I was on a tour where we we went, we flew into a city, and then we leased a car or a van, and we drove to every place. We went to places that were not the big cities. We brought the entertainment to them. It was called community concerts. Oh, I love that. It was, it was, you had to have a lot of energy to do it. I would fall asleep in the car, like this, just to get from point A to point B to the next You're probably one. going to a lot of fairs <laughs> and festivals. And, 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 and we, yeah, we, well, not the festivals. They were actually venues. Some oh, of them were colleges. Some of them were music um, venues. Um, there were all different kinds. And we drove in every kind of weather. And then we would come back for it to do our laundry and go out again. <laughs> I did that for two years. I did 59 concerts, 58 concerts the first year and 49 the second. That's a lot of concerts. <laughs> but oh. it's, you know, when you're driving and they're, oh, my God. Yeah, but, yeah, but you'd have to take a couple so years deep. just to catch up on sleep. But the people are so appreciative. Yeah. So appreciative. Yeah, it kind of makes it worthwhile. And you can come home with stories of the road. <laughs> well, and everybody loves those. Yeah. We've all got them. If you've traveled ever, you're going to have some road stories. For sure. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty great. Well, Rosalind, thank you so much. And please do come back anytime. Oh, thank you. We'd love to. Yeah, it's been terrific. Okay, hold on one second. Rosalind, kind. I can't tell you how excited I was for this interview. I, and she's got one of the best voices. I always have uh, in, enjoyed her. And of course, you know, her sister, Barbara Streisand, um, just an amazing talent. And uh, Rosalind, right there with her in my opinion i, I just think just uh, amazing I, I i would love to see the two of them in concert that that would be incredible um the new music is look of love and the island and it's out now do yourself a favor and check it out um rosalind uh, i said it on camera but she's just as good now as she was 50 years ago just an unbelievably talented um singer amazing Absolutely love that interview. Hope you did as well. If you're finding us for the first time, thank you. So glad that you're here. And we could definitely use your support. Easy to do. It's free. If you prefer to watch, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please just subscribe. Really helps us out. If you're a listener, wherever you listen to your music from or, or to your podcast from, subscribe there. Really helps us out. Um, you can find currently 731 episodes audio and video on our website meistercon.com so please check us out there it'll let you know anything that we have going on um we typically put out three or four episodes a week we've been doing this for five years 731 is a lot of episodes um 
just very grateful for the opportunity to, you know, I think our guest list would stand up to any other show. I'm so proud of it. Um, if um, you really want to support us, our IMDB page is under Too Opinionated. All you have to do is pull it up. If you go to imdb.com, look up Too Opinionated, that's it. Just bring the page up. That helps us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel. And we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, imdb.com, Look up the Two Opinionated Podcast and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.